Well, thank you for, um, I'm super nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Um, they can make us nervous. Yeah. Don't be nervous, we're only judging you. It would be, a, <laughs> it would be appropriate to be a little nervous. <laughs> My question is, you've been interacting with a lot of new, kind of probably awkward people. <laughs> what? Which, I'm standing oh, these right guys are awkward. <laughs> I'm standing right here, lady. <laughs> um, which is very gracious of you, and I think that you've all earned yourself lifelong fans, so. <laughs> but my question is, do you have any pet peeves? Okay, no word limit on this one, guys. No word limit. Here we go. Pet peeves. Should we go? Is there one? Is there people in particular that you want to hear from, or do you want to just should we run the gamut? Is everybody okay with this? Now, I want to. I want to warn you. You're going to hear some hard truths. Some hard truths. Strap in, everyone. The pet peeves question. Let's start with you, Molly. No pet peeves? Yes. Okay. Make something up for us. All of us? Everyone please, one more time. Get us water! You don't have any. I mean, if I encounter pet peeves, I usually retreat to like the ladies' room or my room. So, I can't, but I can't really articulate what those are right now. Ladies' rooms are pet peeve of mine. We'll come back to you in a few days. I trust you'll have some pet peeves. Um, I wasn't going to say anything about this, but uh, being completely honest, one of my like top three most pet peevey things in the world is fake mustaches. <laughs> I don't know why, but they, I can't eat around them. I don't know if you noticed I was off to the side, and I couldn't really make them. I didn't know you did have one. Yeah, I tried to grow one a couple days before, and then they just drive me fucking crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> so there we were. <laughs> You, you came, so good for you. Uh, many of you have cameras and use them to take pictures of you with us, and that's wonderful. But the folks who have those little strobing flashes that cause you to actually start to foam at the mouth and swallow your tongue, uh, that's my only pet peeve. Where are those oh, cameras in the ocean? Yeah, you people are all wonderful. I mean, you know, you're, you're very nice, you're charming, you come up to us and and you're very polite, and, and it's been terrific interacting with you folks. Except for that one guy who's a real cock. <laughs> I'm standing right here. <laughs> you already have, you have a pet peeve, I like that. Just the cameras thing reminded me, this is not a problem at all with this group, but um, I'm from the YouTubes, and on the YouTubes a lot of like 16 year olds do this thing called vlogging, I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, and a lot of them, when they meet celebrities, I mean, web celebrities, they will take their flip cam and like put it right in their face and be like, could you say good morning, ladies, it's Monday? And they, <laughs> they do that without regard to whether or not it's convenient for you, if you're in a conversation with the president, they'll be like, David Reese, could you say good morning, ladies, it's Monday? And then what are you supposed to do? Just walk away. <laughs> I don't talk to young people. Lunch. Yeah. So that is my pet peeve, is like, the camera in my invasive, face without consideration. Invasive vlogging. Invasive vlogging, yeah. Invasive vlogging. Right. Storm, pet peeves. Monkey feces. <laughs> um, this is usually over email more so than in person, but uh, it, it's never fun to get one of those emails that says, you know what you should write a song about? Because either it's not a funny idea, which is 80% of the time, no offense. That's good. Uh, see what I mean? No, but uh, he said Fibonacci sequence. Even funnier the second time, apparently. Uh, but it's either not a funny idea, and you still you, you either have to ignore the email, which is what we have to do at this point, or you have to write something nice if they're or say something nice if they're. Yeah, you know that's all right. Maybe I'll think about that. Uh, or if it is a funny idea, then we, you know, it's somebody else's idea, and we don't want to get into a whole weird. Well, what if it becomes our big hit? Then we have to share profits. Yeah. And that's no good. So profits. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to interject because I used to have that experience. Excuse me, when I was a left-wing political cartoonist, and it would be people emailing me about 
why don't you make a cartoon about this, but it was always something really horrible and personal and intense to them. Like, I can't believe you're not making a cartoon about the wastewater in like this river where I live or something. <laughs> it's like, same thing, except it's like these life and death situations, like, I don't know, this is not funny to me. I'm not interested. <laughs> so, John Robert. Uh, well, I play in a rock band called The Lone Winters, and this is... Uh, this is my first exposure to the Jonathan Colton audience. We're sorry. <laughs> and um, I've been enjoying it very much, uh, much more than I thought. You're, you're, you're quite different from, a, from a, the normal rock audience that I am exposed to. In many ways, you are different. <laughs> Uh, but I've discovered on this cruise that my pet peeve is Will Wheaton. Uh, I don't really, I, you know, I don't really have any pet peeves. You guys are, you guys are always uh, really awesome. I mean, the, the it is, it is true uh, that, uh, as John Roderick said, you're, you're. I mean, I don't know because I don't know any other fans, but I've heard this. Many times, people always say the venues that we go to always say you, you have the nicest crowd, or you know, uh, and uh, it's it's very true that you guys you guys always have leave that impression of being very uh, respectful and pleasant and normal to be around. And it is it is a pleasure hanging out with you and interacting with you. Uh, the the one thing I would say is that I know that because I know it's it makes me nervous when I have to meet famous people too, and I I <laughs> I feel like an idiot when I have to talk to famous people. Uh, so I know I know that feeling. So if you are feeling nervous, here is a tip for you. All you need to do is put out your hand and say my name's, and then whatever your name is, and things will things will go from there. A lot of people get. I, I see people come up to, uh, you know, they buy they come up to buy a CD and get it signed, and they and they they say, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and it's really just introduce yourself, and we'll have a conversation, and it'll be totally normal and cool. But also sanitize your hand before you do that. <laughs> but yeah, do not touch me. Do not touch my body. <laughs> Just to expand on that, there's nothing wrong, and I don't want to speak to every, speak for everybody, but we love to hear, hi, my name is whatever, and I really enjoy your music. And honestly, that's enough. Wow. We love to hear that. I think what we're saying is we are all here willing to pretend for the moment that we like you. <laughs> that's I'm not. Here. I'm not. <laughs> and here's why. One of my pet peeves is phoniness. <laughs> Another of my pet peeves, friends. <laughs> and then my top pet peeve, kernels at the bottom of the popcorn bowl. Yes. Right? Uh, Am I right? Yeah. I didn't mean to hijack. I didn't mean to hijack, but I will just say, just just to expand uh, on what Jonathan said, it's it. it I mean, it's, no one really here has this problem, but there is sometimes this problem where, you know, even though it's obviously not true, you should pretend that we are both human beings. <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes a very simple human interaction, uh, which makes everyone feel comfortable. But the only thing that, that really bothers me, and this has not happened unless I'm unaware of it, I doubt it would happen, but it's when people uh, want to take a picture of you, but they don't want you to know that they're taking a picture of you. <laughs> and this happened in my adopted hometown, one of my many hometowns, because I get a lot of money from local mayors. <laughs> <laughs> and my hometown, small American town, is my hometown. Northampton, Massachusetts, a place where I feel uh, at peace in the world, and not on a boat where a lot of people like have a right, honestly, to come up and talk to me, because you guys have paid money, and I want to see them, you're terrific, etc. Uh, but it, I was I was at the, the first night festivities on New Year's Eve in the afternoon, and I heard this uh, uh, douchey guy <laughs> talking to his douchey friends and wife. And these are like older people with children, I mean, not young douches, older douches. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew they were douches. I knew they had children because I had just seen them at the children's concert before of the of the Cinderella, and he was sitting there with his feet up on the seats. Like, come on, you're, not, you're not thirteen. All right, anyway, <laughs> so I'm, I'm standing in the hot chocolate line, and I hear the guy saying to his wife, the conversation I occasionally hear uh, all the time. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is. I totally is. It, it's him. No, it's not you. Oh, 
like, oh boy, I gotta get out of this chocolate line. <laughs> Jay hears that also. Who's that? Jay. Jay, yeah. I'm not sure, but I don't think it's him. <laughs> and then, uh, so then I'm standing there, and the next thing I, I know is I, I hear this guy going, okay, okay, everybody get together. We're gonna have a family portrait. Everybody get together. I'm like, what's going on? You're in the middle of the hot chocolate line. <laughs> family portrait, and I look over, and his two friends are standing here and here, and he's got a camera pointing right at me, I'm over their shoulders, he goes, click. Like, it was a total setup to get my picture. <laughs> That's unnecessary. That's weird. <laughs> and if I may say, the old douchey. So little kids, don't be old douchey. <laughs> Let's be new douchey. <laughs> Together. And just come up and say hello, and Say your name. And that's a, off the races. John, is it OK with you if we get back to going in order? <laughs> Step two. Um, I actually joined the cruise uh, because I knew I wouldn't come across my pet peeve uh, on board the boat. So I'm, I'm really kind of excited about that. It's, you know, because mine's Paula Tompkins. <laughs> oh, You'll hear about that, you know. Oh, boy. You're in trouble. Um, no, I, I, uh, I second what everyone has said here about uh, after, you know, about seven decades of interacting with fans now, <clears throat> most of you are, are just delightful and respectful and I uh, love seeing you. I mean, we, we, uh, we do various conventions and appearances every year and it's... Except for that one cock. <laughs> yeah, the one cock, yes, there's the, the cock in the room there. Um, but every now and then, it's, it's a real outlier, but every now and then there's someone who seems to have absolutely no idea of rudimentary social cues. So that, you know, you're, you're trying to get away, trying to, get, trying to end it nicely, and it is just not working. And uh, you don't know what to do in that situation except to say, I am going to go over there now. I do not want you to follow me. If you do, I will hit you. And, and it's, it's terrible when it comes to being that blunt, but it's very rare. Um, mostly this is just, it's a privilege to have anyone who wants to see me in any way or form. So, <laughs> so thank you. Sagal, pet peeves. Um, and I have a question, and this is genuine. As Bill was describing, the people who don't get rudimentary social cues don't understand it when people don't want to speak to them. How many people have said, oh my god, I think he's talking about me? <laughs> Yes. That's why we're here. Correct, I'm, I, not correct. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm totally projecting, of course. <laughs> uh, I think you're up. Um, so, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, I wanted to say that the, the, the thing that people, almost everybody who I met on this ship, the thing that you've been saying to me is not my pet peeve. The thing that you've been saying to me is, I'm so glad you're here because once I told my parents that you were going to be here. <laughs> when they finally understood. So, you're Carl Castle, right? So, it's wonderful because, you know, my usual audience is a little older than you are. And, I'm, it's like, and they're like, oh, we love you. And now we have a younger audience. And they're like, my parents love you. Like, my actual pet peeve, which none of you have said, is people coming up to me going, wait, wait. And expecting me to finish it. And here's the thing that nobody knows, and I will share this with you, because you paid good money to hear secrets from us. I hate the title of my radio show. <laughs> I do not have anything to do with it. From the it was invented before I joined the show. And at moments like that, I wish the title of the radio show was, Hey, hey, I'm an asshole. <laughs> so that Which happens to be true. I know, it's just a so First of all, people are accurate in my case. And secondly, people would then have to come up and say that to me in order to make that joke. And wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> You already went. You already went. Ash, answered. <laughs> By the way, the, uh, the quiz show that is happening at the end of the cruise has just officially been renamed Hey Hey, I'm an Ash. <laughs> <laughs>